Hey, I'm Stuart Sink. Normally you might find me out on the golf course practicing, but today I'm practicing one of my life's other loves, cooking on my grill. I like to inject the pork shoulder when I cook it. It's not necessary, but I just believe that it gives it a little extra flavor, kick, uh, pop or whatever. I really like cooking the slow cooks. The, you know, pork shoulders or brisket ribs. I, I like the long, slow cooks. I just, uh, to me, the strategies involved with a long, slow, low temperature kind of cook are just uh, really interesting. And, and um, I'm always intrigued by reading or hearing about what other cooks like to do, their little tricks. And, you know, some of these things, they just develop over time, you know, as an individual taste. All right, well. I believe this shoulder is ready for the grill. It's, uh, it's almost like a therapeutic thing for me, and, I, and I, it, I always enjoy trying to see how good I can be at anything, whether it's you know, golf, obviously, or um, you know, we love to ski in the wintertime, and I'm always pushing myself, or cooking barbecue. I just love to try to see how good I can get at it and how, how I can improve on the last time. The, the difference though is if you're, if you're cooking on gas versus charcoal is you're going to get a better flavor off charcoal than you do off gas. Start the cooking process. You really don't have to babysit it. I just cooked the pork shoulder for 11 hours and I've really only touched it twice. I, I put some uh, baste on it and I wrapped it up in foil. In 11 hours that's the only times I've touched it. And so um, it's not like a real hands-on kind of deal, you're just waiting and you can be waiting around in a grill, you can be waiting at work, you can be running errands, you can do other stuff in your life in advance, but the grill really is gonna settle in, into a place where it's gonna cook the meat just right for you. And uh, all you have to do is learn where that spot is. Check the temperature here, I think it's done. Well, the, the biggest thing is just temperature. The meat temperature has to be to a certain point for any different cut. And uh, it, it really is, is very simple once you, once you really learn where uh, pork shoulder is at its best, and brisket where it's at its best, what temperature, and uh, that's why the meat thermometer is such a handy tool. You have to absolutely have to have an accurate meat thermometer to cook good barbecue or, or you'll just never be able to turn out good results consistently. I guess I start with the end in mind. You know, I kind of know what I want the taste and the tenderness to end up look, being like, and I want the experience to be a certain way, and you want to wow the people that you're feeding. This bone should just slide right out and how about that? Out it comes. I think that came from my mom. My mom was a, she was always a big cook growing up. Not a barbecue cook, but just a southern cook. Cooked everything and she always enjoyed the wow. And that first bite, getting the people's reaction. And uh, to this day, she still does. And I think I got that inherited from my mom. That I really love to just knock their socks off with the first couple bites. So we got the finished product here. It's excellent, it turned out great. It's an economical meal that can feed a lot of people, and most importantly, absolutely delicious. Practice makes perfect. It's almost too good. Mmm. It's quite good. I think it's lunchtime.